learned about Heward's journal, and I found out there was an expert by the name of Jim Woodruff. I finally got a hold of him one day, and the two of us would talk forever about the topic because we both loved it uh, a lot. So here are some of the things that Jim and I would talk about. Now we've got the transcribed journal. Detroit, March 24, 1790, took my departure from Illinois, had trouble, we left a cake, a cake of pork behind. Uh, we realized it when we got to the Petite Coat, which is an area on the Detroit River. Um, I returned with one of the canoes. Anyone know how to spell canoes? It's funny <laughs> to see. You know, back then in 1790, there was a lot of phonetic. You had a lot of different languages running around, a lot of different phonetics, but that's canoes. He went to Babby's Mill, and then with Duarte, walked opposite the fort. They borrowed a canoe, went across the Detroit River, grabbed a keg of pork, had to get out the gate, because you know, Detroit was a gated community back then. It was, it was gated for obvious reasons. Um, they got out the gate, and they went back, carried it down, each their turn, uh, and they met up with their other uh, boats. So when I went, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's a little bit of complaining here by you, but he's describing, you know, this is his first day. And one of the things, when I started researching this, the uh, University of Michigan started scanning their books, basically taking all their books and doing OCR text recognition on their books. And what that allowed an amateur historian like me to do was to chase down, basically, Google searching books. Also, maps were being digitized. If you didn't have time to purpose, personally go to a, a, a book room and look at special maps and get the permission to take them up, now they're digitized and in high resolution. So when Jim and I got together, Jim did a lot of his research, 80s, 90s, 2000s. Internet came out. Jim and I communicated by him, but I, I was good at the internet, and I, I liked uh, being able to search stuff on the internet. And here was a gem that came up, that came to us just a couple years ago. This was found in a this map of Detroit. Uh, Fort Monon was found in a... Uh, at an estate sale, I believe. But look at it, here we are. We got the Detroit River. We read the Hughes uh, first journal there, and there's the main gate. Right? So, here's the main gate. There's maybe that's the, that's probably the path Hugh took in 1790 down to the Detroit River. This map, uh, uh, this was a painting, I guess, taken of the Detroit Riverfront at the same time. I, I often kind of suspected that maybe these were like artist renderings of what the city might be like, but there's a, a reason why they were accurate, why they were meant to be accurate, and it's because of wartime. So you have these people taking these, you know, you can't take, you can't pull out your iPhone in 1790 and take a picture. So they were getting artists to accurately render. What did the, the, what did it look like? And there you see, there's the gate, and there's the path down to the water. I often joke, like, oh, maybe that's Hugh and his party. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Should be. <laughs> Again, this, is a, this was taken from a map by, that was made by uh, French spies in 1796. And they had made this getting ready for a potential war, what was going on. And there was a part of the waterfront. And there again, the little orange is the front gate representation. So that, that's, that's where Hugh was. And this is, the, this is the map in its entirety. It is uh, currently in Paris, the original, and it's gigantic. And you can't read it here, but I'll go. It, it shows each of the ribbon farm landowners. It's got so much detail that if you say, hey, we need to get, we need to take over this guy's farm and get ready for some type of attack or that, whatever it is, they could use the reference this map. But you said circle up there, that's Fort Detroit. Here are the two canoes going down to the Petit Cote. I never knew that side of the river was called Petit Cote. I just figured that was the Windsor, Canada side. But back then it was re referred to as the Petit Cote, or a small coast. Here, another thing to note, you'll see these farms, and they're all like, they're like ribbon design. At the end of each farm, they'd have a mill, a grist mill. You can't dam up the Detroit River to turn a mill, so they would use windmills to grist or to whatever they're, they're turning. And they had the names of all these people. So if I wanted to follow, he went, he, he walked up, went to Babby's Mill. Well, there's Mr. Babby. And that's where he was. Today it's a, I think it's like a cement plant or something. Wow. It's, it's still there, but you can go and say, hey, this is where they were, standing on Babby's. Uh, <coughs> and again, this is the, uh, more, more of the same. <clears throat> um, I want to leave you with one uh, other uh, 
point taken out of Felix Journal, and I'll read this, and this is kind of a quiz, to see if anybody uh, in here can guess where they are. So April 24th, 1790, refitted our canoes with gum, you know, the birch bark canoes, they had to gum them, turn them upside down. At least I don't have to do that to my sea wind, because <laughs> that seemed like a labor-intensive process. Set off past a rapid, and about an hour after which high broken land and some pine trees, the banks of red land, from thence came to a river from the east. So I'll give you a hint, you're heading north on Portage River, or excuse me, Grand River, towards Lansing. A little lower, two cabins of Indians from Saginaw. They were providing canoes for their departure to the course to this time, nearly northwest by north. So that's northwest by north. From thence, high broken land and some pine and cedar. About 11 o'clock, came to an island in the middle of a river and a long rapid, and afterwards another island, about midday. Dined the course west-northwest and came to another island. Afterwards, three small islands and some pine trees on each side of the river. High rocks. High rock. And if you, you, got, you kind of, when you read the journal, you get used to what he's talking about. When he says mountains in Michigan, I'm not picturing the Rocky Mountains, yeah. but I'm picturing some, something that's going to impede his way as he's trying to, to go uh, a certain course. High rocks. There was high rocks on the north. The small run of water from the south, after which another small island, and a long and pleasant drift of an equal and strong current. The banks high, but the beach level and gravelly bottom to another long but not very strong rapid, and to another small island, the course west by north, to again high banks to the north, to another island, from thence to another island, from thence to four others altogether. If any of you look on Google Earth, you can figure out uh, where he is. Following from there, a high sandy bank and some pine trees on the south side, after which a large island and two small ones following. Afterwards, three small islands, two small metals to the north. If you're thinking about small metals in the north, think about as you're paddling into uh, Portage area, right before the Kruger Memorial. This last course nearly west, heavy wood on all sides, and camps opposite an island. Anyone have any idea what that first river might be? Red cedar. Yeah, that's the red cedar. And then it's, you know, so he's, he's passing up. And if you think about it, he's doing a heck of a long distance in one day in two birch bark canoes. He's going almost all the way from maybe a little north of the, the Diamondale area all the way to uh, Portage. Portland. Portland, excuse me. <laughs> that was one day? That was one day. That was one day. This is in 1790. So who is working the chainsaws to clear the fallen <laughs> timber? <laughs> well, ironically, the river must have been clear because in, in, in 100 years earlier, when LaSalle was going down portions of the Huron River, he gave up on it because there were so many log jams. Well, um, April, we might have had high current, which could have swept out some of the trees. Too. Yeah, you never know. I mean, there, there could be a lot of... Uh, I'll let uh, these guys talk about when they created it, but... I tried to do some of the area, and I ended up bushwhacking and carrying my canoe around down trees. And uh, these guys had a bit of a so yeah, it all depends. I bet a lot of the flow is impeded in in the last centuries because of yep. well, marshes being drained. Water tables drop significantly. Yes. Water. What's that? Dams. Yeah. Well, you, well, you've got dams, so that obviously Farms. changes what what things look like. <laughs> so Hinsdale, uh, who did a lot of historical work in 1920s era, he had mentioned that he thinks the area, this is the this is Jim Woodruff's map, I had it printed out, uh, this portage area, and the portage trail still exists, by the way, and it, it's, it's you can actually go there and you can get a sense of why it was a popular portage area. It's now DNR forest. So don't go there during deer season. I have a picture of me doing a video, my wife taking it, and a gunshot going off right there, <laughs> getting kind of scared. But you can go out there and check it out. I took Mark out there one day and showed him. Uh, but the best way to uh, recreate Hugh Hewitt's trip is by canoe yourself uh, on our beloved Huron and Grand Rivers. I, I would really like, if any of you are interested in history and interested in this topic, uh, Jim passed away, and I don't have someone to kind of check my work with or to chase something down. It's been a lot of fun. If anyone's interested in joining me, my email's here. Come see me afterwards, and I'd love to uh, kind of get a, another email group going together researching Hugh Hewer. There's a lot to do, a lot of fun stuff to do. At that, I believe I've... Oh, did anyone have any questions briefly? Did you get it? Yes. No. Um, that spot where you were showing the petite coat? Yeah. 
Is that island near Bellana? Good question. Downstream. That would be below it. Yeah. Let me look, let me pull up the map again. I think so. Can you put this uh, back up and I'll Yep. I don't know how long you uh, you've got about five minutes of okay. Q&A. Okay, so you need the uh, map of the team. What's that bondage form there? What is it? Yeah, so I'm trying to... So if you go... I don't have the... I can pull up the rest of the map later, but what did you... What was the... I just wanted the name of the island. It might be Gross Seal. I, I it believe... Is, it's... It's. Uh, I, I should know that off the top of my head, and I don't. That's not Gross Seal. Oh, fighting Gross Seal would be below. It's, you're right. Yeah. Fighting yeah. Island. It's Fighting Island. Very fighting Island. island. Fighting island. island. Yeah. Fighting island. Bell Island's island. island. at the north end. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, so you're right. Uh, here, let me just. Uh, sorry. Let's see if I can't see. There. there. No, I can't. Unfortunately. Right, right, right where Lake St. Clair comes in, that's Bell Island. It's the second island, I believe. To the left there. Yeah, so we're way down river. Okay, so there's down river, and I'm forgetting what this. Uh, uh, one of them is Boblon Island, and, I, and that, that's Pablo Island, and now I think it is. Yeah. Yeah, sorry, I don't have the exact. Anybody else have any questions? Please. Just a comment. Uh, Jim asked uh, me and my partner to uh, stop at Sullivan Island yep. because that's where Hugh Dewar was windbound for a couple of days, and that's way down at the tip. Right, right, right in this area. So yeah, Celeron Island, it's un uninhabited. Uh, and he talks about camping on the northwest point there. If you go to Google Earth, and if any of you do canoe expeditions, and you look at Celeron Island, you would say, I'm, that's, that's, where I'm cam that's a camping spot right there. You know, you, so a lot of you do expeditions, you'll start to pick up and know where a portage might be or where a, a camping spot might be. And yeah, that northwest point to this day, it's, I think, probably kids go there and anchor their boats and party or something like that. I've never myself been out there, but yes. I'm looking on it. <laughs>